Labs are one of the most popular dog breeds globally, and for good reason. They have a fantastic personality, they make good family companions, and that short coat of theirs is quick and easy to take care of. In this video, we'll break down everything that you need to know about the latter, so you know exactly what kind of grooming that you can expect with your Labrador. Welcome back to the Femrir Labrador Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the incredible Labrador, then how you can become a high level canine leader that raises perfect Labrador companions. So if you're a lifelong Labrador lover or just thinking about getting your first one, this channel is for you. So subscribe and turn on that notification bell and you'll never miss a future Labrador video. So then let's dive into today's video and start off talking about care of that coat and the brushing requirements. Now even though the Labrador has a short coat, you would be forgiven for thinking that it doesn't shed. The Lab has a double coat that is water repellent and even though their hair is short, they do shed regularly. They also blow their coats when the temperature changes and they switch out between a coat for warmer months and then a coat for colder seasons. Ideally, the brushes that you want to keep on hand for a Labrador are a slicker brush or a Furminator or a de-shedding rake and then a rubber comb. Now, out of shedding season, the slicker brush is going to be the go-to brush for the Labrador. Thankfully, they don't have long hair and a quick weekly brushing or a couple of times a week will keep their coat in great shape. Even if you can stand the hair around your house, on your clothes and all over your furniture, brushing is still essential. It spreads around healthy, naturally produced oils that form close to the dog's skin and serves as a great bonding experience for you and your canine companion. Now, when you are brushing them, make sure to run the brush in both directions, both for against the hair growth and with it. This allows the top layer of fur to be lifted up and access the lower level of hair more easily and then remove any that might be loose or dead. It doesn't bother the dog at all, even if it looks uncomfortable. Just make sure to brush it back down in the direction it grows once you're finished. Now, when it comes to shedding season, this is where you're going to need to pull out them big guns, the Furminator. You want to be careful when selecting either of these brushes as they come in different coat type variations. Getting the one that does not suit your dog's coat length can damage the guard hairs and the skin of the dog. But when you get the right brush, again, the same principle applies. Go in both directions and you will notice you will be shocked about how much fur can come off such a short coated dog like the Labrador, something that I can speak to from severe experience with my golden Labrador Sully. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts that I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Now when it comes to bathing, labs can be easy keepers. Maybe. Now if the individual dog isn't that active then you'll have to worry about this less. The labs also love water so if when you're out and about exploring, if there is a puddle or a river or a very very muddy puddle, they will help themselves to it. Again, something that I can personally attest to, which then often will mean that you're going to have to have simply more baths with your Labrador. Now for shampoo needs, a lab should be washed with a high quality natural shampoo specifically for dogs. This is where you should always be brushing your dog beforehand and then brushing them afterwards. However, it should be noted that you should never use human shampoo on a dog of any breed. Human shampoo is not chemically formulated for a dog's skin or fur and can actually cause much more harm than good. Once a Labrador is bathed, it is vital to make sure that they are also well dried. And once they are well dried, this is where again you want to be giving them a good once over with your comb or your brush. Water can become trapped under that bottom layer of their coat. This can cause the fur to mat, which then can cause skin irritation or hot spots. Now, when it comes to eye care, labs don't have many eye concerns or special instructions. Though if you do see any discharge, which is entirely normal from time to time, just wipe it off with a cotton ball. 
And when it comes to their ears, like with all breeds with floppy ears, ear cleaning should become a regular part of your Labrador's grooming routine. You will need cotton balls and ear cleaning solution formulated for canines. Just add a little of the solution to the cotton ball and then wipe down the inside of the dog's ears, making sure that you're following the directions on the package. But do not press it down into the ear canal and only run it around the areas that you can actually see. Pushing cotton balls or Q-tips past where you can see can damage the lab's sensitive inner ear. Ears should also be kept dry and even if you don't always need to do a full cleaning after a bath or swimming they should at least be dry so again just grab a dry cotton ball and pat it around the ear to absorb any water. Not doing this can result in possible ear infections. Now, if you notice your dog scratching at their ears, tilting their heads a lot, uh, a bad smell or a lot of flaky buildup in the ear, or oftentimes you might notice them do a shakedown and flap their ears, it is time for a vet appointment as this could be a sign of ear infections or maybe even parasites. Now, Labradors don't have any special needs when it comes to their nail care. Just make sure to trim them as regularly as needed. A good judge of when it is time for a clip is if you hear the dog's nails when walking on a hard surface. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the grooming requirements of the wonderful Labrador. If you did find it useful, a thumbs up is always really important and helpful on these videos. And if you are new here, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. We've got two dedicated Labrador videos coming to this channel every single week. And I can't wait to speak to you on the next episode of the Femre Labrador Show.